Hi, I'm Dave with Crown Bees. And briefly, I'm just gonna give you a little lecture on why you don't use bamboo. It's um, it's a bad thing. I just wanna kinda of explain, give a little science behind it, why this isn't a good thing. I know it's cheap, it's everywhere. Uh, it's cheaply made across overseas and, and it's, it's there in a lot of stores. It's really a bad thing. Two examples of why, okay? First of all, let's understand. A mason bee, as she's using holes in your yard, uh, normally they're going into reeds that are kind of spread out or into holes in trees that are kind of just spread out here and there. So it's tough for a pest to move from hole A right next to hole B because they're spread out. For us humans, we want to aggregate everything to a tight little spot and all these holes roll in one area. It's easy for the pest just to move back and forth from one to the other, okay? Let me show you what happens in the first year. Okay, so on the board behind me, this top um, tube, uh, the colors are all out of whack, okay? There's no such thing as a green egg, but just go with me, I didn't have any yellow, so. Um, the bees have gone in there and put down pollen. She's laid an egg, and then she's sealed that chamber with a bit of mud. So pollen, egg, mud, pollen, egg, mud, all the way through, okay? As the bees are out there gathering pollen, there's a thing called the pollen mite, and its job in nature is just to eat pollen. So as the mason bees belly flopped on the flower and she's grabbing her, her pollen, she's also bringing in some pollen mites too. It's natural. So she's brushing off that pollen into holes. Well, there's little pollen mites that are kind of stuck inside there as well. Once she's finished sealing these chambers, it's a race. Who gets to the pollen first? Does that egg you know, morph into be a little larva and it chews up all the pollen and spins its cocoon and it wins? Or were there enough mites in there that they uh, were able to reproduce quick enough that over a period of time, they became um, a whole chamber of pollen mites, okay? That happens um, everywhere and you really can't do much about it, okay? But let's go forward into the spring. So now as these bees are back here, they emerge, March, April, May, they're coming out. They chew through um, that mud wall and as they hit those pollen mites, they're now spreading the mites kind of back through the whole tube, okay? They're carrying the mites with them out into your yard, so we're kind of reintroducing the mites to pollen loads out there. So you're kind of accelerating what's happening in your yard, but probably more importantly, in that same hole, you've now got pollen mites back and forth, okay? So she's again gathering the pollen, laying the eggs, sealing that chamber. A new female has done this. And in this hole now, there's already pollen mites in there. So the next year, you're gonna have a whole bunch of pollen filled chambers and maybe one or two eggs. By the third year, basically this whole thing winds up becoming just a mason bee cemetery. No bees survive. It's just how it works, okay? Um, second point though, now we're looking actually at chalk brood. This is a nasty, insidious little spore that um, a tiny, just tiny little grains. Three, two to three grains of this pollen or of the spore as the mason bee larva eats it, um, it just fits perfectly with their body chemistry and they, uh, over a month, change to be this little C-shaped, um, very friable, just kind of a black, dark gray uh, spore. It's nasty, okay? So that happened here. And the bees back, as they crawl through, emerge, they crawl through, they now have to, they have to go past this little um, old larva looking thing, but they get that spore all over their hair, all over their bodies, and they've spread it now up into this part of the hole. They're also spreading that same little thing out on the outside of other holes into the flowers, onto your mason bee house. And you don't know this is going on, okay? So every new bee now is out here touching the spore. The next year, you're gonna have a couple, who knows? And within three to four years, this chalk brood is a nasty thing. It spreads everywhere. And the only way to get rid of these two pests is to harvest your cocoons in the fall. Hold cocoons in your hands. And so we've got a thing called a reed, natural reed. I'm able to um, snap it, open it up, and just expose whatever was in here was, was the mason bees, okay, the cocoons. When you're looking at reeds, or, or reeds but bamboos, these things are unbelievably strong. There, there's no way to do this. And so these become um, while they're cheap and easy to use, they become mason bee cemeteries. I also want you to appreciate that um, the size of these bamboo things, this is huge. Um, mason bees go into tiny little pencil 
um, size holes. Amazing, they might use it, but they're spending so much time bringing mud inside there. It's really bad. You'll find some of these things have holes all the way through, or um, or, or nodes. Actually, look at this one right here. I'm going to put this pencil into it, and this is on. This was glued on the back of a house, and it's only this deep. So you're really not getting your money's worth when you're using bamboo. It it's a wonderfully structurally sound um, reed. It's great for building things and, and growing fast in places. It's not good for mason bees. So if you do have a product like this, if someone gave it to you, go return it. Tell the manufacturers they're, they're doing something bad for your mason bees. These are becoming mason bee cemeteries. I know they're cheap, but they're not good for your bees. Rather, shift to holes that you can open up. Reeds, we've got paper tubes, we've got wood trays. Shift to things that open up. Crown bees really cares. We care about the bee first, and then we care about the human um, element next, the design, etc. We're fine putting all these things together, but you really do need to harvest things. Thanks for watching. Thanks for caring.